The Official Story of October 7th The official story is that on October 7th, 2023, thousands of evil Hamas terrorists broke out of their walled-in enclave and killed approximately 1,200 Israelis for no reason other than because they were evil and wanted to kill Jews. Nothing was done by the Israeli government to provoke this attack, and nothing of any relevance happened prior to this date. The attack was as undefended as could possibly be. Israeli defense forces did not respond for nine hours, despite having received ample warning that an attack was coming for months, from both their own intelligence services and from Egyptian intelligence. No attempt was made to warn the Nova Music Festival of an impending attack, despite Israeli security forces being aware the day before that an attack was coming, resulted in hundreds of deaths and captured hostages. The attack was met with so little resistance that Hamas themselves were reportedly surprised by how many Israelis they were able to capture and kill, their surprise perhaps due to the fact that they'd spent two years training right out in the open less than a mile from the border for an air, sea, and land attack using motorized paragliders, drones, and motorboats. This is all perfectly normal and not suspicious at all. Also not at all suspicious is the fact that 100% of the 1,200 Israeli deaths on October 7th are being attributed to Hamas, despite Israeli media and eyewitness testimony reporting that the IDF was firing indiscriminately into areas full of Israelis. The burned bodies you see in photos of the October 7th devastation were with absolute certainty burned by Hamas, despite the Israeli government's acknowledgement that it had previously misidentified hundreds of dead Hamas fighters as Israeli because they'd been so badly burned by IDF fire that their corpses were unrecognizable. The official story of October 7th also previously included narratives about beheaded babies, babies cooked in ovens, and babies ripped from the wombs of pregnant mothers, and you were an evil Jew-hating Holocaust denier if you doubted them, but those narratives have since been walked back and are no longer part of the official story, so belief in them is now optional. The murder of 1,200 Israelis was so evil and egregious that it has warranted the killing of more than 16,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including more than 7,000 children. It will likely warrant the killing of far more, because Israeli lives are worth much, much more than Palestinian lives. Only a racist Nazi would believe that Palestinian lives matter. Israel is not to blame for any of the killings in Gaza anyway, because Hamas is using civilians as human shields. It is anti-Semitic to ask how Israel has managed to kill so many human shields while killing astonishingly few Hamas fighters and dealing no meaningful damage to Hamas leadership in the process. Now that 1.7 million Gazans have been displaced and they are being shoved toward the Egyptian border, It is perfectly fine and normal to be seeing official agendas being pushed by Israeli officials and thought leaders to thin out Gaza's population and relocate them to other countries. Only an evil terrorist supporter would call this ethnic cleansing. One ought to think of it more as a permanent vacation. If you question any part of this official story, you are an evil Jew-hating monster who loves terrorism and wishes Hitler had won. You should be censored, fired from your job, kicked off campus and disappeared from polite society because you support genocide and you want good people to die. Does this make you feel like you're going crazy? Good. That means it's working. That means the official story is taking root in your mind. Let it blossom and bloom inside of you. Stop struggling. Relax. The more you struggle, the more it will hurt. Just let your mind go blank and obey. This will be over before you know it.